with little moisture for over a year now, grassland is obviously less than ideal for cattle. It may be difficult for some producers to even find enough ground to suit their needs. That leads to dry lotting cattle for a period of time, which can bring different reproductive issues. Rick Funston talked with us in North Platte Monday about that situation. So we want to make sure that we're going to have those animals in gaining condition when they're trying to establish pregnancy. But uh, breeding in a dry lot, there's some opportunities I think producers could look at taking advantage of. One being synchronization. Even with natural service, there's some real uh, very cost-effective ways to synchronize uh, beef females such as the heifers here or your cow herd and get the advantage of synchronization with more calves born early and they'll be heavier at weaning and we've got data that the heifers are actually be older and those older heifers will or be uh, more, more of them puberal at when we go to breeding of their progeny. So what are some of the methods that you're looking at there, Rick? What can people do? So there's, there's um, a number of different methods uh, utilizing a, an oral feed supplement, uh, melangestrol acetate, which these heifers were on, or just turn the bulls in and then five days later give everything a shot of prostaglandin, which uh, is a very effective way we've been synchronizing our cow herd at the Goodmanson Ranch for several years. If you're breeding in the dry lot and then you're transferring them somewhere, if you're trying to find pasture and you have to travel with them, uh, is there any concern about losing that, uh, that calf that's being bred? Yeah, so that, that's a real concern I have is extended periods of dry lot, which we may have to do because of, of no forage or very short forage, and then transporting them as animals after they're beginning the breeding season or artificially inseminated. Generally, I recommend after you artificially inseminate a group of of heifers or cows that we transport them before seven days or wait 40 to 45 days because that stress of transportation during that intermediate period can actually cause embryonic loss. What's the longest period you could see something lasting in a dry lot situation in a year like this? You know there's some people that are going to dry lot heifers all year. They won't ever go to get grass probably and I think just with our expensive rations that we have, uh, we really need to balance rations, know what the quality of forage is. Those heifers don't have to gain a lot. I mean, pound, pound and a half will get them going along fine and, and a high roughage diet with very little uh, supplement, depending on the forage quality. There's some difference when you go from west where we are to the east. Uh, the pastures have greened up much more quickly because there has been some rain. So if the producer is able to get those cows out to pasture and is breeding there, are there any uh, physiolo physiological concerns there? Yeah, there's, and I, I'm amazed how well some of the uh, cattle breed in the east because they are breeding in cool season. Uh, brome grass pastures every year and that grass can be really washy, not much uh, energy in it and, and really high in protein, especially if you fertilize before breeding. In the west we generally have some more dry feed with a warm season, cool season mix, but we don't have any residual forage and if uh, if you're breeding on real lush, washy grass, there can be issues with uh, too much protein and not enough energy and having an, a, a negative effect on embryonic development. You brought up a point before we uh, went on air here that there were some cows that got into some pretty good cornfields because there was a lot of down corn or the combine just wasn't able to pick it up. Uh, what do those cows look like now that had the benefit of that additional forage or feed? And our cows as well went to fields that had a lot of down corn come back in much greater condition than normal, which might be a false sense of security is my concern because those animals that are in abnormally high condition score, if they're losing condition or on a different uh, plane of nutrition or energy status going into breeding, it could actually be a bad thing because I'd rather have a cow gaining condition or weight gain, which you won't see. The problem is we're not gonna see this until it's too late. I'd rather have a, a breed a thin cow gaining condition than a fat cow going the other way. And so I think we really need to be uh, cognizant of, of what the plane of nutrition is while we're trying to establish pregnancy and what they went from from the feedlot diet to uh, going to grass, for example. We might have to do some additional supplementation during the breeding season.